You know, I got to mention this because the combination of the 25th anniversary of DX, a post-Extreme Rules bump, the expectation of Bray Wyatt appearing, led to Raw doing by far its best numbers since football season started. The show did 1.82 million viewers, 0.55 in 18 to 49. Audience up 14% in viewers, 37% in 18 to 49, 48% in 18 to 34. Fifth on cable behind the Raiders versus Kansas Kansas City Chiefs NFL game. 15.79 million viewers and a 4.65. A 4.65. The kids like Mahomes. At 18 to 49. And anyway, here's the point. First hour did 1.88 million. Second hour, 1.89 million. Third hour, 1.7 million. These are These are very good numbers. And obviously... I think some people were interested in in Bray Wyatt showing up. But what was interesting is if you were watching the pay-per-view on Sunday and the pay-per-view ended with the return of Bray Wyatt, then one could argue, well, maybe I should tune in at the very beginning of Raw. Maybe this man will kick off Raw. Well, the first quarter of Raw, I mean, it was good, but the whole show was good. There was not like a giant spike at the beginning of the show that then fell. But for reasons that I can't explain, at 9 o'clock, which was in the middle of the segment where the Judgment Day called out AJ Styles and wanted to get AJ Styles to join the Judgment Day, which has literally, absolutely, positively nothing to do with Bray Wyatt. That, I mean, the quarters are going like this, and all of a sudden it goes, ba-bam, and it shot like straight up in the air. 2.2 million viewers for that segment. And then it dropped back down and it was just normal again for the rest of the show. It was almost a straight line for the entire show, but at 9 o'clock it just went, ba-bam, straight up in the air. And I guess maybe Gallows and Anderson... Like, the news that Gallows and Anderson were returning to WWE and people presuming that he would be part... Because when we were talking on Monday about Gallows and Anderson coming back, I mean, I didn't have any inside information, but the first thing that I thought was, well, AJ is being recruited by Finn, and, you know, what better storyline than AJ doesn't join, but he brings in Gallows and Anderson, AJ, Gallows and Anderson versus Finn Balor in the Judgment Day. That's what I presume they were going to do. And, you know, maybe there was a tremendous amount of interest in the return of Gallows and Anderson. Because I can't think of any other reason that that quarter would have shot up to 2.2 million viewers. I mean, what was it? So anyway, that was the uh, the big story of the Raw ratings, that big peak right there. And then it just went back to normal again. So it was like it peaked later because people thought, oh, man, maybe Bray's going to come out the top of the third hour or top of the show. Nothing. It was just that deal. Everyone's saying maybe it was halftime of the football game. But you know what's funny about that? No, it's, Guys, it... there's a halftime every Monday. <laughs> this doesn't happen every Monday. I've never seen it before. I mean, I'm sure it's happened. But it was a very unusual spike that every week there's a halftime, and we don't see that spike on other weeks. So I don't know, dude. It was weird. Well, you know why it stands out so much recently is because it does look like a straight line. I mean, everybody that pretty much is starting with that show is tuning into the very end. And there's, you know, a little bit of variation before the end. But this, I don't know. Maybe they just thought it's a second a second hour bump and Edge might be coming back. Will Bray show up? I, I, don't, I don't know what it is, but it obviously... I mean, it was a huge, that was the biggest thing they did all night. It was 2.154 million people, was up 25% amongst people 18 to 49, was up 20% overall. So that seemed to be the number coming out of ratings that were broken down that I saw by Russell Nomics because the other one that stood out to me when it came to 20% was Rampage on Friday that as soon as the show opened up, it opened up with 487,000 people. That second quarter hour, 10.15 to 
they lost 20% and they were never able to recover. And it just obviously slid down the closer you got to midnight and can't really blame anybody for that. It was close to midnight for heaven's sakes, but it's amazing that that number dropped off in the way that it did right off the bat like that. So I don't know what it is with 20%, but it, uh, there's two numbers this week that really stand out. One of my wonderful, loyal, beautiful super followers on Twitter, at Brian Alvarez. Went back and looked, in fact, and the uh, the halftime of the game was not 9 o'clock. No. About, it was about 45 minutes later. Yes. So uh, it was not halftime. No. And the last time we saw a big spike like that was for SmackDown, for that Braun Strowman-Otis match on the 23rd of September, which had been heavily teased and all of their uh, various clues. So that one, t- for sure, to me, was people tuning in thinking Bray Wyatt was going to debut in that segment, and he did not. So I guess, I mean, the only thing I can figure is Bray, but I still don't know why nine. I mean, at least with Braun, it's like Braun used to be part of the Wyatt family. At least that segment was around 9.23 p.m., and the clue was 9.23. So all of the all of the evidence, all of the clues pointed to those two segments. It was the 9, and, 9 to 9.15 and 9.15 to 9.30 on SmackDown. Are you giving people too much credit with that, though? Like, no. Is it 9 o'clock, the, the, the old deal with, like, I mean, WWE's got a lot of older fans. It's when things Braun... used to happen, it happened at the top of the hour. Bro, that's, it's been like that for 25 years, and we don't see the spike like that at 9 o'clock ever. I know it was for sure of... Braun and yeah. and the nine twenty three p.m. on nine twenty three with nine twenty three clues. I'm talking about Raw though. I mean, it could just be the top of the hour plus. But it didn't happen 10, at ten. Did it didn't happen at nine. I... It didn't happen at nine last week. I. It's I an aberration know. here. Maybe maybe it is. Maybe it is. Everything coming together at the right time with people hearing about Edge and how that segment went, and we're going to have the Good Brothers, and will Carl Anderson wear the never open weight title to the ring? Actually, nobody thought that at all, but there are people thinking that he won't show up. Uh, and I, that's I, I, look, the way that it's gone with Gallows and Anderson, I don't know how much they're going to be utilized in New Japan's plans you know, uh, up until January 4th, but they're obviously going to be in the plans, and this obviously has worked itself out at a higher level, so I don't think you have to worry about him not showing up for anything or them having a problem with the belt. Dagan says, why do we focus so much on these numbers all the time? Actually, on this show, we don't. No, but no. when when one quarter shoots up to three million on a Friday night, and during football season, head to head with a game that did a four point six three or whatever eighteen to forty nine shoots up to two point two million, that's something to try and figure out. What the heck's going on? It's interesting. They're hot. Look, I don't say they're hot. They're hotter. They're getting hot. You know, things are clicking right now. Look, everybody has put the bad Bray, for the most part, out of their minds. They're interested to see what comes next. The bloodline, for anything you don't like about Roman Reigns' title reign, Sami Zayn, the interplay with now Solo Sokoa coming up, will The Rock come in? What about Jay and his relationship in between everybody and all that stuff? It's an intriguing thing. The stuff with Edge on Sunday, if anybody saw that or heard about that, Everybody raving about how that went down. So the, everything right now seems to be okay for WWE, even if you don't love everything that they're doing or nothing that they're doing. They're obviously warmer, much warmer than they were. So, again, the numbers seem to, to show that. For says, what TV show ended at 9? Was it Men in Black or something? That's probably all it is. Show ends at 9 every week, brother. Doesn't oh, happen. Yeah. Hip hop Atlanta, or was it Hip Hop Atlanta, Miami? I'm not sure where they're at for that first hour. Uh, I mean, we've gone through a lot of these shows, and they may hurt WWE, but obviously nothing has gone off the air and caused that kind of spike. Period. Maybe they should get like a different producer to give the show a different kind of feel. Uh, actually, actually, yes. Maybe okay. they should put the cameras upside down. How about that? You know what they need is black and white. Or put him mean. black and white, Jared. Make him <laughs> so- look as gold and gray as possible. There we go. <laughs> Excellent. Hey, Jared, can you put Vinny upside down? There we go. (laughs) This is what's going to make this show better. We're going to review Rampage with Vinny on a different camera angle. Put it in an angle, though, Jared. Like, uh, yeah, add black and white. Now we're talking. Vinny, can you spike your hair up next week? (laughs) Yeah, just put your hair up in a spike. (laughs) We'll, We'll have you doing the show upside down, hanging from the ceiling like a bat. The Vin Man. 
If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.